Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel out on a road trip today and I bumped into Johnny. Johnny has a really cool DIY camper van conversion that she's built out herself and she full times in it. She's gonna give us a tour inside and out. So join us. Hello, Johnny, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hi, I'm Johnny, and this is my ProMaster 3500 Extended. It is the 159 wheelbase. I built this out for travel nursing. During the beginning of the pandemic, I was ready to get on the road. So I built out the van so that I could do travel nursing. And when I'm not at the hospital, I can be off grid adventuring on hikes and kayaks and do what I love. So I put the magnetic screen on cause I like to be, like to have the outdoors in view. So it's a magnetic screen and I just Velcroed it to the side around the top so that can easily come down and store away when I'm not in use. Inside on the floor, I used the tongue and groove. It's the vinyl flooring. Underneath that, it's one by twos, have lock wool. And the actual ProMaster comes with an already hard floor with the very durable surface. And I left that. It's very, it's waterproof and works real good for the vibration and the thickness. So let's go inside. So right up front, I've got the kitchen. I've got the 5.1 cubic isotherm refrigerator. Back in the back is my bedroom area. On this side, I've got my composting toilet and extra seating. Very nice, very spacious dresser with a custom build top. This is my shower and my lagoon table that swivels around for extra seating. So up front, I put swivel brackets on both the seats so that I could turn those both around. I've got the lagoon table and I have a nice area for eating and video editing. In the ProMaster, you've got that custom shelf above. That's my catch-all for when I'm driving. I, everything goes up there. Above is my attic. This holds a ton of stuff. I've got a lock on it so it doesn't fly open when I'm driving. But up here, I keep all my window shades. I keep my cover for my attic fan, my first aid kit. I do carry a small heater for when off grid. My extra backpacking and my hiking shoes are up there. Lots of room for extra storage. I've got hooks on both sides. That works. That's my towel hook when I need to dry my towel. But what I made for when I want to just pull this out. This is a curtain that I custom sewed to fit. It just hooks up there. I've got a snap here, snaps on. This gives me a ton of privacy and I don't have to put all the window screens on the front if I don't want to. This also works as a fabulous barrier to keep the cold air back here when I want it to or keep the heat back here when I want it to. It literally is like a 20 degree at least difference. So that saves a lot of energy. And that on hooks. On the front, I have just a regular purchase um, window shade, but on the sides of the windows, I made custom screens for these. And all I did was I took the Reflectix and then just a little piece of wool on both sides. I did sew it along here so it wouldn't come undone. And those just press in quick and easy. There you go. Lots of privacy and they're thick enough and they, they have a thermal value as well. So up here, I've got the Max Air fan. And then on the ceiling I did, it's got the same one by two nailers with the Havelock wool. And then I put the tongue and groove pine. I did put a, a darker stain on that to match the decor and then sealed it with the polyurethane. And then this is the kitchen area. I used the butcher block counter and that just has the butcher block 
uh, surface coating on it. I did want a bigger sink, so I did go with the deep bar sink and then the faucet swivel so I can use it inside and out. And that's just, that is also connected to my on-demand water heater, which we will show you. And then this is just a nice decorative area. I keep my, my favorite coffee mug there and then my hand sanitizers, my drains, and then I keep my salt and pepper there. So nice little just caddies to keep stuff. Underneath the sink, I do keep um, just some quick access water for when I'm cooking. And then I like to use this for cooking and then just my trash can and cleaning supplies. I do have my fire extinguisher and my CO2 detector there. And then on this side, this little area, just nice easy drawers. I just keep my towels and my laundry soap. This is just kind of like a kitchen catch all. And then my silverware drawer. This one, I had this extra space, so I made this little drawer, and that's my spice drawer and my coffee drawer. And not to waste any more space, I've got an area on the side here, and this is enough room. I put two shirts here and two uniforms, and also that stores my cord, which I pull out so that I can charge my Blue Eddy while I'm driving. And then my LED control is under here as well. That just, those are not hardwired. They go to the LED, so then I can just charge the bank and I've got power. These, what I love about these is these stay put. When you're driving, they go nowhere. And that is very, very important. So the refrigerator, I went with the isotherm. First of all, it's huge. And travel nursing, I didn't want to spend all my days off shopping. So I can literally put several weeks of food in here. The freezer is a ton of space. Just use the um, regular travel lock there. And then underneath here, another lock and tons and tons of space here. One of the important features of this refrigerator is you do not have to be on level ground. And when you're off grid, that is sometimes very, very important. This is not gonna ruin the refrigerator being off, um, not being level. Now this added touch here, these shelves, I made this from the same tree as all the other, the, count, the dresser top and the lagoon table this shelf this all came from the same tree so just added personal touches to make it feel more at home so here's the bedroom we have the lucid memory foam mattress it is the 10 it's the 10 inch and i love this because it it goes nowhere it's nice it's comfortable and when you're when you're moving around it doesn't I, like literally i can put a cup of coffee on there and it and it works perfect on both sides of the bed are nightstand areas the mattress is a queen short so i and i wanted it to run long ways so nobody's climbing over one another and these are small storage areas i actually keep my wee boost in this and it just has a little notch here and then i can there and each one is a nightstand area storage compartment and i actually am able to keep my bed quilts in both the front ones because they're bigger and then i did put two windows in the van they are tilt out awning type windows and i wanted that specifically so that i could have my windows open in the rain and i didn't want to make this area more closed in using cabinets so i just put the baskets up for I put my glasses in there at night and then I've got my I, my books. I forgot to mention on the mattress, I actually, because of weight, and I drilled the holes in here and sealed that mattress real good, sealed that area real good so it doesn't get any mold. The walls are shiplap and that also is done. There's the Havelock wool behind there and then just the shiplap over it. The decor, we wanted it to have the nice homey feeling. And I have a dash on, so that's why the quilt is that way. I've got the LED lights, and those are on the control right here. And I've isolated the four in the back and then the two up front. 
that also controls my fan, my water pump, and then my gray tank. Also, we've got the voltmeter, two USB ports, and then the 12 volt. So this tower right here, the top one is just more table space. So if I'm cooking and I need more area, this pulls out and then I've got more counter space there. Also, if I'm sitting on this bench, I also have a little table there. This drawer is for all those utensils that don't fit in small spaces in the regular silverware drawer. So that's nice and handy. This right here is, this is where I keep all my dishes. I've got my induction cooktop all my plates. I use the jet boil a lot if I just want to make a cup of coffee and all my extra dishes and storage. And then the bottom drawer is actually, you'll notice how tall my bed is. So that's actually a step and not wasting any space. It is also a dry pantry and I like to keep my canned goods in there because canned goods are so heavy. All right, moving over. Before I forget the LEDs, I have the um, LEDs and I can turn those on, off, change the colors, um, and that's recessed behind this cabinet. I love LEDs. I think it gives you a nice ambiance there. And then moving down, I have got the Nature's Head composting toilet. I do have to move a couple of things. And this just lifts up. Oh, that's gonna be close. This lifts up. Got a magnet here. And I've got the composting toilet. I've got my spare. I just have a paper towel wrap there and it holds three extra rolls of toilet paper. And then I just used a cup holder for my vinegar water. And that's got the fan to it and the composting toilet has worked out amazing for me. This is the nature's head and I couldn't be happier. There is zero odor on this toilet. And then not to waste any more space, I've got a toilet paper roll here and it fits right in this little pocket here. So then I'm not, so then that's easy access. Utilizing everything. And then that just goes back on there. Well, the cushions I made myself, I just took a four inch piece of foam and put a that actually has a protective cover underneath it and then the cover I did put a zipper on the back just regular sewing material from Joann's and I've got a zipper on both of them so that those can come off and those can be washed also on the front of the composting toilet I put another lagoon bracket because I do have a seating area here I did want to be able to move the lagoon table back to the back if I wanted to so this is the dresser pantry and electronic system. So I want, I knew I wanted a, a tall cabinet so that I could put stuff on top of it, right? I put my mirror up here, all my toiletry items. When I'm getting ready, this is the perfect level for me. Each drawer is very deep and holds a ton and has a sliding compartment. At the end of the day, every, everything goes in that drawer. And then this one is actually the pantry. Everything is in containers or the, even the bread so it doesn't get squished. But um, everything that I use for cooking is either in this drawer or in the dry step pantry. And then the bottom drawer is just my electronics and I keep my rain jacket in there. All right, moving over, I'm gonna move that lagoon table out of the way. Everybody needs one of those. This system right here, another bench, another cushion that I made, but this one is special. This is actually a shower. I, I realize in van, that van life, you don't shower every single day, but I wanted access to shower if I came down off of a hike. This just hooks up here, right there. And this, oh, you've got the shower base, and I didn't want, I didn't want to have to run more plumbing over here. So what I did is underneath the sink, I have an on off, it's six foot. It's got an on off button and this can go into the shower. You can 
you can put it low. It also is long enough that it goes over here and it actually stays put so you can shower your hair just like normal at home. And it's got the on off switch because I've got the four gallon on demand and you don't wanna waste water in van life. So you turn it on, wet yourself down, put your shampoo on and then rinse yourself off. And this is one of my favorite features in my van. I love being, as a nurse, when you get off work, you want to shower. So that has been one of my favorite features. And that just tucks back away. Now, after I take a shower, I do have to let this dry before I tuck it away. That's always one of the biggest questions. So I let it dry and then I tuck it back away. There you go. And that just goes back over there. And then the lagoon table, this bracket here is perfect because I can sit there, there, or there. And I turn that and this is perfect. I can, if I've got the door closed and I don't care about outside, I can sit here, I can eat, I can edit, I can move it this side. If I wanna look outside, I can sit here and then also here. So it works out perfect. This table tucks away while I'm driving. I've got it backwards. This this table tucks away while I'm driving, right there. The seat turns around, it's perfect. So one of the things that I forgot to tell you about the shower and the water system, I have two 20 gallon water tanks and I have a 10 gallon gray tank. The shower, the sink, they both go to the same gray tank. I've got the ball valve on it and in the when we go to the back, I will show you how everything ties together. All right, let's go outside. Okay, so now that we're outside, you can see I've added the running boards. And right behind the running board here is my gray tank. That is a 10 gallon tank connected to the sink and the shower. Up top, I've got the topper roof rack. I've got 600 watts of solar, two 100 watt panels and two 200 watt panels. I get this question all the time. Why did I go put the 100 watt panels on there? And I wanted the extra solar and it fits perfectly next to the max air fan. Four 200 watt panels would not have fit. So also on top, I've got a roof deck and um, that is just for better landscaping photos mostly and uh, kind of a cool place to hang out. So let's go to the back. I did add the ladder. And if you're gonna add a ladder, I suggest these seatbelt covers because when you open the door, your ladder is going to hit the side of your van. Get these seatbelt covers. They're nice, they're padded, they're really waterproof, they dry fast, and it protects your van from getting damaged. It's seconds as padding if you wanna put a bike mount on the back of your van. All right, let's open it up. All right, one of my favorite features in the back is my outdoor kitchen. This pulls open. I use the same top on my outdoor kitchen as I did on the inside. It's all from the same piece. Open this up and you've got a ton more storage in there. Nothing better than cooking outside. This is my outdoor table. I can put this anywhere. I can work on projects on it. I can clean fish on it. It's just an extra Rubbermaid table. And this beast is all my outdoor extras. Tons of extra storage. And then in here, I just keep my extra. These, these little pieces of firewood actually go to a little stove that I have. I've got my black stone in there and then my lawn chair, my outdoor trash can, and then behind there is just my outdoor LED lights. On this side, this is my extra just outdoor um, extra stuff that you need in van life and nowhere to go with it. And then little table and here's my water. I've got the Bosch four gallon on demand water heater my water pump, and then I do have a bilge pump in the back. My water heater is on its own outlet. And the reason why I did that is because I have the Blue Eddy solar generator. That's what I completely power my van with. 
the water heater will completely drain your battery in no time. So I put it on a switch and I wanted it on a switch that I could reach from inside my van. So I wake up in the morning, I reach over, I turn my switch on, the water pump comes on, 15 minutes later I have hot water. I actually turn that off before I get in the shower. There's no need to have it on. You've got four gallons of hot water. So like I said, I've got 40 gallons of water. I've got 20 gallons on this side and I've got 20 gallons on the other side. Those are both inside and then those just go to the one pump. There's my tool bag. And then this little thing, super handy, this unscrews and I actually have my kayaking fishing pole in here and I like, to, I like to cook over the campfire. I've got my hiking sticks in there, a fishing pole in there, and that's a tripod that goes over the campfire for more outdoor cooking. I put a lid on that because everything slides around in van life. And then you'll see I've got the cords here the blue eddy solar generator has six ports for ac power i have every one of them i've got each outlet is wired by an extension cord and the reason i did that because i know it's more expensive but it's the stranded wire and it doesn't vibrate loose as bad as the single core wire and that's why not only that but they're color coded. I have yellow, red, black. So if I'm having an issue with something, I know exactly what outlet it is, exactly what color cord it is, and I know where to search for the problem. So that's what I did. And it can't go anywhere without your fishing bag. And then I just have some little extra water in there. And then the floor, this is what I was talking about earlier. This mat, this is solid and it comes with the ProMaster. It's perfect for the pattern. I took that out. I used that to trace the pattern on my three quarter inch plywood. Underneath that three quarter inch plywood, I have the one by twos and the Havelock wool and that's how I insulate the floor. Okay, so on this side of the van, this is where all my electrical starts. I have got the Blue Eddy solar generator. I completely power my van with this generator. It's a 2000 watt inverter with a 1700 watt hour battery. So what I did is it's got a 12 volt, 25 amp port on it, the DC output. This goes to my fuse panel. That controls my fans, my water pumps, my LEDs. That all goes there. Each one of them has their own designated fuse. I also have an additional fuse there. Why did I put a connector on there? Because if I take this apart, if this battery for some reason dies, I can take that apart. I made another cord that goes to my jackery. So if I need an extra power bank, I can power my 12 volt system with my backup. The Blue Eddy, I, it has six AC outlets. I just put the one cord in it. That's a surge protector. That's another backup. The surge protector is here. All my outlets go into this one surge protector. Like I said, the cords are color coded. I also have the Wii Boost cell booster. And then Back here, I've got the kill mat in that's the noising over the noise denner over the wheelbases. My other 20 gallon tank. I do have the um, tracks in case I get stuck and that's a perfect spot for them. That's a deep space and it's hard to store stuff back there and that's, that's there. And then that's just my outdoor rug. This thing right here is pretty neat. I have a Dawson puppy and she it's a little high to get in. So this has these little uh, feet. These, actually on the other side, that platform sits on top of four of these and you've got a step to get in and out of your van and that makes it a ton easier for her. Now let's go back to the Blue Eddy. Right now I'm at a campground, so I'm on shore power. All I have to do is unplug this from my Blue Eddy. This is my shore power. That plugs in there and I'm on shore power now. All I have to do is that one core change and then on the side of the van, I've got my outdoor port for my shore power. When I'm off 
when I don't have power, when I'm off shore power, I have the Mr. Buddy heater that I use. A lot of times I'll start it up, I'll get it warmed up pretty good in there, turn it off and I'm good for the night. In the morning, I'll turn it back on and warm it back up. And, it, and this thing, it's, I've had fabulous luck with it. And this runs on the little propane one, gallon, one pound heater, one pound tanks, and I've got a ton of those here for extra. I did put the reflectix around them. You have those extra when you make the screens. I put those around it and it prevents them from clanking. And also when you use those, there's moisture and that just helps so that you don't, it, the moisture is not everywhere. Sorry. Okay, coming around over here, that's where my shore power goes. And then this is actually locked, but that is my water hookup. So I can put the cord there. I do have the pressure regulator and I can fill up my 40 gallons of water through a hose. And then I've got the, the little bullet leveler there. Okay, for my logo on the side here, you'll see it says GOAT and that's what I named the van. And it stands for Go Onward and Travel. Well, Johnny, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour today. Absolutely. What was your background before you built this van? Because I film a lot of vans and I would say that the build quality here is an exceptional for a DIY. Thank you, thank you. Um, I started out, I built my own home and then I did a lot of Habitat for Humanity type stuff. So you obviously learn as you go. Um, this is actually my fourth build. I helped a lady build out her van. She was in need of a, a helper. So I did that. And then someone saw those videos and gave me a van. So I went ahead and built that van out and you learn as you go. So at the fourth build is, uh, I do have a little bit more experience than probably some. And then I also built out an ambulance, which was very neat. Every project is so much different because every van or every build, the inside, the structure is different. Nothing is square and you have to work around crazy metal beams and just everything is different. So the more I do, the, the better I get. So I saved mine till last. <laughs> and, and the amount of products that you have on board and the latches you used, it, was that trial and error with some of the other ones where you got it to the perfection of this one? Yeah, actually, um, on even on this van, I had some latches that really weren't working. So I had to trade those out too. So every single build, um, I, I have learned more and more as I go. Even on this one, being on the road, I brought stuff so that I could make changes because every single day I'm learning something different or a different need that I might have, or maybe that I don't need and always changing but i've got this one dialed in pretty good from from my experience of the other four other three now is there any tips for the viewers that if someone's looking to take on their first camper van build themselves any special tools that you need to buy that you know one wouldn't have in their normal toolbox yeah the Honestly, I was very lucky because I had a table saw. If you have access to a table saw or renting a table saw, it really helps getting stuff square. The other thing is that if you've got, I, the guides that you can use, they're plastic. I don't even know what they're called, but it literally gave me a lot of help. They're plastic and you'll see them, tile users use them all the time. I do have one of those and that helped me out a lot. And a lot of it is trial and error. Take a piece of scrap wood and take a little bit off each time until you've got it perfect because it is, these angles in here are hard to get. Down. And a lot of the stuff where you able, I seen the lagoon table, the freshwater tank, the water pump, those seem to be RV component items that you probably bought online through a dealer. It is. But is the rest of the items stuff that you were able to just buy at a local home center? Oh, I did get a lot of stuff from Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, we have a hoods close by us. That's where I got the butcher block. Um, a lot of those just local hardware places had really everything that I did. Most of the stuff that I ordered off of Amazon or a website, it was convenience. The windows were special order and I did actually have to wait a long time for those 
because, and it was because of COVID, because the factory was shut down. So I waited months for that. And this was a brand spanking new van you bought. You had to cut a hole in the ceiling for the fan and the I windows. Did. Was that a little nerve wracking? It, it absolutely is. I, the very first hole was, actually my shore power was the very first hole, but then the ceiling fan. And thank goodness that was my third fan that this one was the third fan that I put in. So actually, once you cut a hole in in your van the first time, it really isn't hard. And I think most people fear away from it because they think of like this, I'm not cutting a hole in my van, but measure three times, cut once. And it's really, it's, it's easy. It's really, I, I would recommend a DIY because you pay a lot of money to have windows put in, the fans put in, and you don't have to. Now, the, tell us a little bit about the floor plan design that you came up with. Was this based on experience that you had with some of your other builds or examples of stuff you saw online? Honestly, because of my other vans, I did know that I wanted to sleep head to toe. A lot of van builds do side to side. So because of that, the bed, had to be the first thing in. Once that was in, I took a trip out and I built this and then I took a trip out and it's like, I wanted to see how to, does everything, where do I want this? Where do I want that? Do I want a tall, big dresser? How do I want the shower, the toilet? And I made cardboard mock-ups, put them in the van, exactly dimensions of what I was gonna build does it work? Can I walk down the aisle, you know, and not have any problems? And that's what I did. So, and I did, you know, you, you build and then you change things. So, and that's the benefit of building as opposed to buying. If something doesn't work, you know how you put it in, change it. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour today. I'm sure some of my viewers are going to want to follow your journeys because you're out here full time. You're working really hard and uh, this is your home base here at this yep. campground for now and i'm sure you're going to move on as, as work moves how are they going to engage with you i have a youtube channel and it's called johnny's journey you very specifically have to spell my name because it's auto corrects to a guy's name so it's johnny's journey and so i'm on youtube facebook instagram and i just have started TikTok, and it's all johnny's journey Wow, this is this is great information. I'm sure you're going to gain some new followers now after doing the van tour. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you worked all last night, and this is your relaxed day. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.